tiny in all that air. The Philip Larkin Society Podcast. Hello, my name is Lynn Lockwood and this is the podcast for anyone who's interested in Philip Larkin. We hope to bring you new insights into his life and writing by talking to people with fascinating stories to tell and unusual connections to the great poet himself. This includes people who knew Larkin personally, as well as fans, experts on his poetry, biographers, students, artists, musicians, and much more. My guest today on this introductory episode is Kyra Peperides-Jakes, one of the Philip Larkin Society trustees, who has been a great supporter of the podcast right from the start. So, um, Kyra, welcome. You okay? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Okay, I'm very well, thank you. Um, could you just sort of introduce yourself a little bit and um, say how you got involved with the Philip Larkin Society? Yeah, of course. Um, so... I'm just finishing writing my PhD um, at the University of York and um, as part of that I'm writing on Philip Larkin and his kind of Yorkshire based work. Kind of at the start of that was Hull 2017 and I, I've, all, I've been a member of the society for a long time but mm. I got quite involved because I was volunteering on the New Eyes Each Year exhibition. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I kind of met, I met Phil and I already knew Graham through Freedom Festival, who I now work for. And yeah, they, they just encouraged me to to get involved further. And um, as of earlier this year, I'm a trustee now as well. I know you were there at the momentous meeting when I said, oh, we could just have a podcast. And there was like a big silence around the room. Not um, from me. I not from you. I wasn't no, silent. <laughs> exactly. And that's why you're here now. Um, yeah. And uh, I hadn't actually meant to just go, oh, let's have a podcast, because I really have been thinking about it, but I had been sort yeah. of wanting to plan it in a bit more detail. Um, so it's, and, and I think they, the society were quite right to kind of say, well, go and have a think about it and what you, exactly what you want to do. Um, and I think they put, you know, a little bit of uh, gentle pressure on us to explain what it was going to be about. But you were kind of there right from the beginning. You were really supportive of it. So why did you think it would be a good idea then? Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of a podcast. Um, I think it's just a new way, isn't it, that mm. we can get people kind of thinking about Larkin because unlike, I guess, the articles that we write or the journal or something, you can listen to it while, you, while you're running, while you're commuting. Yeah. Um, and so it's just a completely different kind of audience that I think yeah. you'll be able to tap into through it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I think that'll be great. And I really like the idea that you can sort of be anywhere in the world, you know, and, yes. and just get involved and, and listen and join in. And I think when we started the Twitter account a few years ago, and I remember that was the first time I saw your name, actually, because you kept popping up. And I kept wondering, what on earth you might be like? Are you, you know, I used to imagine <laughs> this, this with, your, with your lovely exotic name. And I used to think, hmm. Oh, should be an interesting person. I was so pleased when you came and joined the society and started. I was going to say, I hope it wasn't this. disappointing. No, not <laughs> as at all. exotic no, as no, I sound. <laughs> and I think we got a lot of people involved, and I want to get our Twitter um, followers getting in touch. Uh, and I'd really like to link the podcast to the Twitter followers. And, oh, definitely, um, yeah. You know, there's lots of amazing stories out there, and I really want to hear from those people in Australia and Seattle that buy our T-shirts and yeah. from all around the world. You know. And, uh, it'd be so good and, and we can do that with this and we can talk to anyone which I think will be absolutely fantastic. You're also really involved with um, the musicians that uh, play the music at the start of the podcast that we're going to have in every podcast so I don't know if you want to say a little bit about the band. Oh yeah um, I've kind of been championing this project to anyone who will listen actually. Um, mm. I only found out about it because I was running this um, this conference on Larkin in, mm. in Hull in June and um, Wes from the Mechanicals band was kind of put in touch with me um, and he sent me over these um, kind of unmastered demos of the Larkin, Larkin poems as songs mm. that they are developing into a full length stage show. Yeah. And it kind of like blew me away. I was like, this is such a cool and creative way to engage with the poetry. Yeah, it is amazing, this set of poems that they're turning, you know, set into music. And I know that's been done before. Other musicians have set um, yeah. lark in poetry yeah. to music but this is a nice uh, young sort of fresh new way of doing it and 
the the music at the beginning, the horns of the morning. I just love that kind of jazzy sound that they've got with it. Um, and it's a poem I didn't even know very well, and now yeah. I can sort of go back to yeah. it and read it again and think, yeah, they've they've picked something really beautiful there to set to music. Um, and it's nice that it's kind of music you could listen to while you're driving as well, and you kind of n- not even necessarily thinking this is a Larkin poem. Like it's just yeah. it's just really good music as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's really sort of natural, and and how they they've set the the lyrics and the the music together. It's excellent. All right, yeah. So I think the the mechanicals will be uh, an, an excellent guest, and they've just been really supportive uh, of. Uh, the project so far and Wes said straight away that we could use the music and um, I, I really love that kind of there's almost a bit of a symbiosis between the society and the mechanicals now which is which is lovely yeah um, and I think you know you you've had a big part to play with that so that's great um, so just coming back to your um, PhD um, was there one poem that you found you kind of really enjoyed looking at that maybe came to life for you that you'd not really thought so much before about yeah, um, I I worked on, I guess, Yorkshire and the idea of Yorkshire in Larkin's poetry. And a lot of that kind of manifested as the architecture um, on, I guess, the skyline that he lived in. And one particular poem was um, The Building, which is about is about a hospital. Yeah. And I guess there's there's a bit of debate on whether it is the whole Royal Infirmary, which I personally think it is or whether it's the older Hull General Hospital, or whether it's just another hospital completely. Yeah. Um, I guess the debate comes from the fact that Larkin... I think I think he did go to this hospital, but he he didn't have any kind of long stays there. His, okay. um, he was at a private hospital um, in the avenues when he died, I believe. Yeah. But yeah, this poem, The Building, it's it's just got kind of a lot of like really beautiful or really curious imagery in it that I guess I connected with more... Um, writing in detail during my PhD than I had done before. What What are the images that you like? Then what are the images that stand out for you? Um, I mean, in the first, just even from the first uh, stanza, the first two lines, uh, mm. higher than the handsomest hotel, the lucent comb shows up for miles. Um, mm. Have you Have you seen the? Do you know of the Hull Royal Infirmary? Yeah, it's not far from the centre of Hull, isn't it? No. And imagine, kind of imagine the skyline. Imagine it, um, imagine it at night with those yeah. windows lit up, and yeah, it is—it's like yeah. this kind of this kind of honeycomb image. Yes, and yeah, yeah. People are staying there, but obviously it's, it's not a hotel. Um, yeah. And then in just even in the very last stanza, there's this idea of the clean sliced cliff. Yeah, um, that's a beautiful, beautiful image. Hmm. A struggle to transcend the thought of dying. It's yeah. It's. It's amazing. It's really kind of poignant and really, really thought-provoking imagery. I think. And and this is quite a, a common sort of structure of Larkin's poetry that he takes you through this kind of journey, and there's often a very sort of powerful ending, a very sort of resonant ending, which is often quite to, like one long sentence that might go over like a couple of stanzas or something mm. like that, isn't there? Where he so you really get a strong sense that he's leading you somewhere, and that yeah, that final image of the the just the flowers that people try and bring to hospital. It's a very powerful poem, yeah. But yeah, I just, I really like some of this, uh, some of the imagery in the poem and the kind of, the kind of levelling in the poem between anyone can go in into a hospital, anyone can be admitted. It's kind of a bit sort of luck of the draw. And it doesn't matter what you do in your life outside the hospital. Uh, when you're inside, you are kind of levelled as you are a patient. Yeah. And... There's this imagery of your you're kind of sorted by I guess your illness or your your gender, um, and there's this kind of strangeness between the inside of the hospital and the outside, and how it's just it's kind of a different world. Yeah, it it really is a very kind of solemn poem, isn't it? It's very yeah. much that kind of dark uh, larking looking into the abyss, looking ahead with kind of terror of where he might end up. Mm. Well, thank you so much for um, coming along today and getting us started off. And You're I really welcome. hope hope you'll come back and talk to us again. Oh, absolutely. Excellent. Thank you so much for listening to the Philip Larkin Society podcast. Please follow us on Twitter at tiny underscore air. You can have a look at the Philip Larkin Society website at philiplarkin.com for more information about our guests and the society in general. 
you could also buy some lovely Flute Larkin merchandise there or become a society member. Look out for our first full episode with Professor Eddie Dawes, our chair, on December the 2nd. And please treat us your thoughts. And if you'd like to be a guest, feel free to get in touch. The horns of the morning are blowing, are shining. The meadow is wet with the coldest of June.